Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to walk through some tutorials on how to do some configuration settings in Linux Mint. And uh, I am using the Linux Mint 19.1 beta for this. Uh, most of the things that I do in here are going to apply to any version of Mint. So uh, the version is fairly agnostic. So uh, first we're going to boot in here, and uh, I do have this running on a virtual machine, and I did restore it, I believe, back to as much stock as I could. I do not like this new way of handling the panel, but I'm going to go ahead and deal with it. So what are we dealing with right now on the system? Um, one of the things that I would like to do is we want to change the kernel. Um, despite this being the brand new beta for the brand new release as of December in 2018, it is still running a fairly old Linux kernel uh, for 15. And some people are like, I really want a new kernel. Some people have new hardware that supports you know, great features or functions. Some of the Ryzen chips need a, a newer kernel than this. Uh, so how do you actually manage that? Of course, Linux Mint has in the um, in the update manager, which you can access with the shield in the uh, task manager, or you can access it from the menu by searching for the update manager. If you go under your view Linux kernels, you can actually manage Linux kernels. Pardon this notification up here. I think this is a bug with this beta version. It keeps on going on and off and on and off the internet. All right, but anyway, into the kernels. Um, so what we actually have here is this is going to show us all of the kernels that are available. And you can see right now we only have the 415 branch available to us. We want to fix that. So what we are going to do is we are going to install, um, we are going to install the, um, uh, it's called UKUU for Ubuntu kernel update utility. And uh, we're just going to go over to the, website here that has the install instructions. This is from Foss Mint. All right, I might have to turn off notifications here. I don't know. All right, so basically this is a GUI tool because you can update the kernels with the terminal. I'm trying to do as much as I can user friendly here. We are going to dive into the um, kernel on this tutorial, uh, but that's okay. So basically what we need to do is we need to add a repository. So I'm actually going to copy this line and we're just going to drop that line into the terminal. So when you are doing, doing things, make sure you are understanding what the lines do. So look at the code. So let's look at what this line does. Um, apt add repository adds a repository. So PPA colon is the name of the repository. And so we are adding TJ 2008 slash PPA. All right. And so in the terminal, I can hold control shift and V and that's going to paste my command in and it's going to want my password, which I'm going to enter now. So what this is going to do is it's going to add a PPA. Now, sometimes without that dash Y, it's going to ask, do you want to do this? You'll have to hit enter for yes. The dash Y just says, say yes to everything. So we're going to do that. So now the next line is sudo apt get update. Um, which you don't even need to use the get anymore. Um, all this does is updates the repository cache. You can see that uh, it actually updated it there. And that basically added that to the software sources. So now you can install the application. And again, sudo apt install UKUU is going to install our utility. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It's going to ask us, do we want to do that? Hit Y and go ahead and update that. So this will work on any Ubuntu based system. Since Linux Mint is downstream from Ubuntu, this is going to work. So what we have with doing this is we have in, let's see, where's it going to be at? Is it under accessories? I don't know where it's going to be at. Somewhere in here, we're going to have a new system. There it is. UKUU kernel update utility. All right. So with this, what it's going to do, we're going to get rid of that web browser there. It's going to go online. It's going to download a basically all of the list of all of the kernels that are available to be installed. And then it's going to let us choose what we would like to install. Let's just go ahead and nah, I don't like that full, full screen. I just want to make it a little bit bigger there. All right. 
Can I increase the size of that? I don't think I can. All right, um, so what I have here is I will have, you see, the massive list. I can go all the way down to kernel 4.0 on up from here. So of course, if you wanted the absolute latest, you just kind of grab up to here. If you want to go with the 18 branch, go ahead and grab whatever in the 18 branch you want, et cetera, down the line. So let's just go ahead and be courageous. We're going to install the latest kernel. I'm going to click on this guy here, highlight it, and then click the install button. And this is going to run my install. Once again, I need to enter my root password and it's going to fetch this online and it's going to install the kernel. Of course, any kernel changes that you make to your system, you will have to reboot the system in order to get that kernel change. And so you can see it's downloading. It's going to take about 10 more seconds. Now, what we are going to be able to see is when this is done, it will now show up in the update manager again. And so uh, once it's done doing its thing, we're going to show you what that looks like. All right, so now we can close to exit it. Um, now, here we can, um, uh, it gives us some a couple of notices, Wi-Fi. Uh, updating to the latest kernel might fix Wi-Fi issues, <laughs> depending. Uh, there's a few other things, so um, we'll kind of walk through what those are there. Let's That's refreshing its cache. We're, let's go ahead and close that. So now we're pulling up our kernel information again. And what we are going to be able to see here is now we have the 15 and now we have the 19. So it says it's installed, uh, but it is not... Um, uh, it is not actually active because we need to reboot the system. So let's go ahead and do a reboot. So one of the things that we are going to notice when this is done rebooting is that it will actually be full screen now because the latest kernel supports the full screen without uh, the guest editions that um, used to be required. So now you'll see the full the full screen on the login instead of just that. All right, so now we should be able to go into our um, system information and looking at our system info, you can see that we are now running on kernel 419. So that's the first part of our tutorial is how to update your kernel. So now, of course, if I'm having issues with that, I should be able to go into the mint update, which just showed up on me now, and the mint update will show us the kernels that we have. And you can see that this one is the one that is active. And um, these guys here are the older ones. I could actually come in here and change these around. I could remove old kernels, whatever else I needed to do. So that is how we do our kernels. Now, the second thing we're going to do, um, and this is something that I had identified in my uh, video reviewing the Linux Mint beta is one of the applications that I use is Caden Live. Of course, I do have to spell Caden Live correctly. And what we'll see um, is that there are two options. We have the Flat Hub version and we have the non Flat Hub version. Now, in Linux Mint, the non Flat Hub version is the older version. I think it's, uh, was it 4.17, which actually does not work very well. A lot of issues with it. The other option gives us the 4.18 in the flat pack. I am not an advocate of flat packs and I only use them as absolutely necessary. And so what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to use the newer Caden Live without using a flat pack if possible. And it turns out that you can actually get the repo for this. And um, so the repo is actually. Uh, Kden live slash Kden live dash stable. I'm actually going to copy that from my notepad here and we are, will boot up a terminal. I'm going to paste that into the terminal. Ah, see, I hate it. They, they're changing the terminal now so that now it shows us the number of characters and the password. Linux Mint team, stop doing stupid things. You guys got rid of the good task manager for this crap, and now you're adding this into the thing. It breaks some of the security. Linux Mint team, stop it. This is my favorite distro, and guys, just so you guys know, I am... I am an equal opportunity offender. Even if it's my favorite distro, I'm not going to give them a break when they do something I think is stupid. This is dumb. Um, the terminal classically has never shown the password in asterisk as you type it out. It is a security feature to prevent people from seeing how many characters are in your password. Linux Mint team, 
revert back. Thank you. All right, so this is adding the repository for that. Uh, this is the part where it asks us, do we want to add this? I'm going to say yes. All right, so now let's do a sudo apt update. So this is going to update, and now instead of grabbing the Caden Live from the old system, it's going to grab it from the new stable branch instead. And so if we go into our software manager, I'm going to close that and restart it in case uh, it's um, not uh, pulling the right numbers yet. So if I come in here, and now if we click the non-Flathub version and scroll down to our version information, you can see that now we are on the latest stable, 4.18. This is the one that works very well. Okay, we do have to um, add a bunch of other resources. It's going to go ahead and add those. That's just fine. And so we are going to install that. Well, that's working on its thing. The other thing that I use is OBS. All right. Now we have OBS in the repository, but guess what? It's a flat pack. I don't recommend using flat packs whenever possible. Things like GIMP, I'm not sure if they have a stable repo. They may, they may not. I'm not completely sure. Um, for that instance, I've never had a problem with a flat pack, but the biggest problem with flat packs is, is they isolate resources away. And with OBS particularly, I predict I'd have some issues. I know Caden Live, I have issues when that occurs. OBS, I'm going to predict it. So eh, I don't want that to run either. Let's go ahead and just kind of back up. And again, you can grab the OBS, uh, PPA OBS project slash OBS studio is the repository for that. And so let's go ahead and still in our terminal, we will add that repository as well for OBS. Yes, confirm and run my update. Now it's going to pull the latest software from from the repository. We're going to shut down our software manager, reboot it, and if my theory is correct, I should actually see two OBSs like I've seen two, um, two of the Caden Live. So let's see, so that's not it. Let's see if there's another one in here somewhere. And the other thing is it might show up as OBS Studio, which is this one right here. So now we have the absolute latest, which is the same version I'm running here. So now I can run the OBS Studio without running it as a flat pack. Again, it wants to install some extra things as well. That's perfectly okay. Let it go ahead and do its thing. All right, so now that is effectively anytime you can find a repo, you can install it uh, just like that. So now we have applications. Uh, installed on the system that are going to be newer versions than were originally on Linux Mint, um, but they are going to be the more recent versions because it's always pulling out of the repos. The only other one I didn't add to this yet that I have done this with on my production computer is Audacity. Uh, there's some plugins that I use for Audacity that needed the latest version, and so I do the same exact thing on my system for Caden Live, OBS, and Audacity. So I always have the latest versions of those without having to run any flat packs. All right, so the next thing we wanted to look at is uh, we wanted to look at doing menus, menu configurations, because somebody said, oh, I hate the fact how the menu is organized. So let's go ahead and look at the menu. First and foremost, you're going to find things that you have no need for, like an onboard keyboard. This is an on-screen flexible keyboard. On a non-touch screen, uh, no thank you. Let's just go ahead and uninstall this beast. So let's go ahead and enter my password, and that should uninstall itself. All right. Say yes, go ahead, bye byes. I really don't need stupid onboard keyboards. Now I can hide that category as well, but what you'll notice now is that entire category is gone because there's nothing left in it. Now, suppose I want to keep a software package there, but eh, maybe I just don't really want it on the menu. You know, I'll, I'll go hunt for it if I need to hunt for it. Um, we can do that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our menu icon down here and click configure. And this gives us options for configuring the menus. Um, how things pop up, the sizes, width, etc. Now, hit the 
uh, tab, the menu tab, and then open the menu editor. And this is actually where you can make some adjustments. So let's go ahead and look. So you'll see that some of these are disabled. So if you look for things that you will probably never need to load up, like I can never see a time I would actually be loading the, you know, going into the menu to find the document viewer. I mean, that's automatically going to open if I double click a PDF. So I don't want that uninstalled, but I really don't want it showing up on my on my menu. Uh, so anything that I'm not going to be using, like Redshift, mm -hmm. I could probably just uninstall that. I'm not a big fan of that stuff. Um, don't like it when they <laughs> knock the screens out like that. All right. Uh, Tommy Boy notes, no interest in that. Screenshot, I just, if I need the screenshot utility, I push the screenshot tool and that works for me. Virtual keyboard, don't need that. So basically what we are doing here is we are going to be hiding things that are not there. These guys here shouldn't appear in my menu anyway. Um, let's go ahead and hide GIMP 2.8. Um, I can hide this guy. Simple scan I might need. Uh, hex chat, I'm just going to uninstall that one. Okay, let's see. Office. Let's get rid of the base. I will generally never open that up. Um, I'll just open the individual applications if I need anything there. Here's my other, and then programming, sound, and video. So these guys here, these are kind of defaults. Um, they're going not going to show up right here. We can add and remove things. Actually, I think um, administration and preferences, you can do that as well. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit close on that, close on that, and now this is going to give us, um, if you look through our menus, you know, I hit GIMP 2.8. Of course, the hex chat, I will, will not use that, so let's just go ahead and uninstall that one. All right, so then the other thing that somebody had made comment on is the inability to move things in the menu. Well, you can. You have to do it a roundabout way. There's not an easy, simple move button. But what you can do is, uh, for example, let's say um, you want to, let's say you want to consolidate um, sound and video and you want to consolidate graphics into sound and video. And you maybe, let's see if I can do, we're gonna call this instead media. This is something that I might might like to do. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll take everything out of graphics. What we're gonna do is we're going to copy this, go into this and paste the item. And then we will go back up into graphics again. Let's copy this and let's go ahead and paste it here. So that's basically pasting our items into our list. And now they're over here. We might be able to hide this. I don't think we can. So let's just go ahead and deselect everything from the list. Close that. Now when I open this up, I have one thing that's called media and it contains all my media being its uh, graphics, video, audio, whatever else and I don't have that separate menu there. So now we can just go back through and uh, we can really make uh, our minimalist system out of this if we want to, uh, just by selecting the different things that we would like. So let's see if there's anything else I might wanna select. Um, let's see, I don't think there's anything in other programming. Yeah, I don't have anything else. That's a pretty minimalistic menu as it is. Um, there's that. Of course, I think I can get rid of, let's close this. Okay, so I can show categories, I can show application icons, I can show those, I can enable auto scrolling. Those are the panel settings. And of course, if I want to add something to the favorites over here, I can just drag it over. These guys here I can rearrange just by dragging them around. So there we are, there's how we can uh, adjust our menus, uh, edit things there. Um, I'm guessing to add something to the panel, I can probably just drag it down here, maybe, maybe not. This new panel of theirs really sucks. Let's right click 
add the panel. Okay, you got to right click and add the panel. Uh, the older way you can drag it and drop it down, but this one you can right click and add the panel. All right, so there is your configuration. So we've looked at how to update the kernels, how to add software in the repos, and how to make adjustments to the menu. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see how to do on Linux Mint. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.